Despite being quote-unquote underpowered by 2013 standards, the original Moto X was seen by many as one of the better Android devices to launch last year. Subject of countless fire sales, it's safe to say the OG Moto X wasn't quite the breakout hit Motorola had hoped or even needed it to be. With their back against the wall, this year Motorola is taking everything they learned from that original Moto X and their short time under Google's wing to build the flagship smartphone that should have been. Strap on your seatbelts, boys and girls. This is our review of the all-new Moto X 2nd Gen. Without question, last year's Moto X was a slam dunk in the design department. That cute little M dimple on the back, the extremely tiny small bezels on the front, and a size that made one-handed use an absolute breeze. For 2014, Motorola has brought back everything you loved about the look of the original Moto X, only adding a few notable improvements. First off, we now have metal with an anodized aluminum frame that wraps all around the sides of the device. It starts off thicker near the middle, then thins out around each of the corners. The frame isn't just about looks, it actually has some function behind it too. Motorola uses it as an extension of the internal camera to reduce the risk of any kind of death grip killing the reception of the device. But aside from all of that, we'll admit it looks flippin' great. The only problem we had was the phone can be a little tough to grip onto when trying to hold it with one hand. Uh, so just be careful if you're laying on your bed and you know you're holding the device above your face one slip and you could be going to work the next day with a big old fat lip or black eye. On the front of the all new Moto X we have a 5.2 inch 1080p AMOLED display covered in a beautiful gorgeous Gorilla Glass 3. The glass is actually beveled along all of the edges of the phone and allows for a silky smooth gliding uh, when pulling UI elements like sidebar menus and such. Well, it's tough to make out on the black model, Motorola has outfitted the new Moto X with low power IR sensors on each of its corners. Uh, the IR sensors allow the Moto X to detect when your hand is approaching the display and other kind of basic hand gestures, uh, facial recognition, stuff like that. Motorola also made the smart design decision to move the rear facing speaker of the original Moto X up to the front of the new one and while it appears that the new Moto X has stereo front facing speakers uh, that top one you see there is just a regular old earpiece. One thing we found interesting was that the speaker grills actually protrude slightly from the glass. This means if you lay it flat on a table the speaker grills keep the display from touching a very flat surface. However unintentional, I believe the kids these days call it a lay on table design. <laughs> but it's the back of the phone where the new Moto X shows off its true colors so to speak, showcasing an easily identifiable camera housing. With dual LED flash on each side of the camera, we found it's extremely smooth to the touch when dragging your finger over it and it makes it really easy to clean uh, fingerprint smudges or any other gunk that might build up on the lens. Just underneath the camera you'll find the familiar M logo now as a separate cutout and uh, it's just got like this aluminum, it's kind of like a button that doesn't act like a button, doesn't do anything. Seriously, if there's ever a time to put a fingerprint scanner in a Motorola device that I feel like that was a huge miss opportunity. Of course, there's always the back covers, which Motorola is probably most known for lately. Anyone looking to pick up a Moto X can jump onto Motorola.com and build their own custom Moto X with a plethora of plastic color options. Or if you got a little extra cash burning a hole in your pocket, you can spend an extra $25 for natural wood finishes or genuine leather. The accent color could also be customized and includes the little ring around the M logo and front speaker grills, but that's it. When all is said and done, you are left with a phone that feels quite honestly like pure sex in the hand, and really is only matched by other premium devices like the HTC One M8 or even the iPhone 6. Diving inside the Moto X, you'll find the Motorola has finally... Uh, stepped up to uh, the big boys, equipping the Moto X with many of the same specs you'll find on this year's flagship Android devices. You have a quad-core Snapdragon 801 processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM, a 13 megapixel Sony Exmor camera sensor. The only part where Motorola really cut corners is in the very small 2300 milliamp hour battery. 
It's actually a 100 milliamp hour increase from last year's Moto X, but still incredibly small by modern smartphone standards. But that's not to say battery life is bad by any means. We often got about 17 hours with normal usage, uh, 2 hours of screen on time, and 24 plus hours in standby. But just think of what could have been with a larger battery. Camera performance was also another pleasant surprise. The output was more than acceptable. Uh, for what we would look for in a flagship smartphone. Sure, it can be a little bit contrasty, um, but I mean, it, it really has its own personality, and uh, we kind of liked the whole grainy, contrasty look of it. Our main issue was mainly with the stock camera app because of the weird way it autofocuses, and you have no control over that. You have to tap to capture a picture, and sometimes you know, it would be out of focus, sometimes it wouldn't be, and it was just a little bit annoying. Uh, but, uh, of course, third-party options like the Google camera worked perfectly fine. We don't have time to cover it here, but for image samples and all that, check out our review on Fandroid.com. Moving on to the software, Motorola has done a bang-up job of keeping a near-stock Android experience. In fact, the UI for the most part is almost indistinguishable from Nexus devices. Motorola's modifications don't come with them trying to rebrand Android or mask it, or hide it, or just do whatever they can uh, to make it look like their own design. What Motorola tries to do is add helpful features uh, by way of their own applications, the way it should be. And there's all kinds of goodies here, from the new Moto display that allows you to peek at receive notifications with little effort right on the lock screen, to silence in your phone while in scheduled meetings, or reading text messages aloud while driving with Moto Assist, silencing calls with the wave of your hand with moto actions or reacting to voice commands even while the phone is sleeping yeah the moto x does a lot the best part arguably is that motorola has placed all of their apps in the google play store where they can be updated with new features bug fixes all that fun stuff completely independent of full system updates quite honestly it's pure genius and if you're looking uh, for fingerprints of google's influence this is it. With its unparalleled level of personalization, software support, and the quickest Android updates this side of Nexus devices, overall we found the new Moto X a top contender amongst Android, or any smartphones for that matter. There really is just so much to love and very little to hate. Of course things could always be better, but we suppose they had to leave room for next year's model, right? Without a doubt, the all new Moto X is, at least in our opinion, the new king of Android. Well, at least for the time being. This video review here was just a small taste of our full review, which you can find on Fandra.com. Uh, make sure you hit up the description area down below for a link to that post where we go uh, much more in-depth to all the Moto X features. And make sure you guys check that out. With Fandra.com, I am Chris Chavez. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.